This is the Modern 97. It's a mechanical keyboard with a 97% layout, meaning you get basically almost all the keys you would get on a 100% keyboard, including the number pad, but they take out a few of the keys, squish it down a little bit, and make it more compact so that it's really not much wider than your average 10 keyless keyboard. So you save some space on your desk, but you get all the buttons you need. Available for $139, it comes in two color options. You've got Ocean or Fountain, which I have here. Neither color option is really my cup of tea, but Honestly, this fountain option ain't bad. It fits in really well with a nice clean or cozy setup. The case is a very light green with sort of this robin's egg design. It's supposed to kind of look like a stone. The keycaps are all this kind of really dark gray, almost black, and in some light, kind of a very dark blue, with legends in the same green as the case. The unboxing was quite an experience. You get this nice rounded edged white box with the embossed design, which is a nice touch, and it looks really good. Then inside you get the keyboard, an instruction card, a keycap puller, and then it upgrades from there with this yellow switch puller that looks really good. You've got a soft silicone USB-C to USB-A cable matching the keyboard, and it's got the little Mel Geek logo on each end. You also have some keycaps to swap out for Mac users, and an escape key if you don't want the logo key. And then the USB wireless dongle is completely white, but the more unique thing here is that it has Lego pegs on the end of it. So if you want, you can put like your favorite minifigure or something just to kind of add a little bit of decoration and personalization to your setup if you want to. You've got a USB-C port on the back toward the very left side with a three-way power switch, one side for Bluetooth, the other for the wireless dongle, and the middle for off or wired. On the bottom you have rubber feet, some logos etched in the back, and there's a transparent plastic all around the sides and bottom of the case. If you look through it, you can actually see the silicone dampener inside with the embossed design and the color matching the case. You've got the number pad on the right with print, pause, page up, and page down sitting up above that, and along the number pad you also have home page up and page down delete and insert. It's also got a little divider between the right control key and the arrow keys which is nice because it's easier to feel where the arrow keys start. For switches you've got options like Kale Box Plastic, Kale Tactile, or these bad boys, the Kale Sonic 53. These are faster switches aimed for performance in gaming with a very short actuation travel distance much like you'd find in something like Speed Silver switches. Fortunately the actuation force is not super light so you're not accidentally pressing keys all the time just by resting your fingers on the keys. But they're not super heavy either. I've got the specs on the screen for you. In my testing, they do actuate pretty quickly. I'm no professional hardcore elite gamer or anything like that. I do play some Overwatch sometimes. Sometimes I play Apex with, with my boys, but I uh, haven't done that in a while because we're all in our 30s and two of them have kids. If you're somebody who plays games more frequently or you are looking for that faster actuating switch, then you'll probably notice more than me because I've, that doesn't make me any better in video games, I'll tell you that much. They're linear and they feel and sound very smooth. There is some dampening material inside the case in addition to the silicone dampener you can see on the bottom. And that's going to help a bit with the sound, but if you really want it to sound a little bit more thocky and a little bit more like a higher end custom, you might want to take out the switches and lube them, which you can do because this is a hot swappable keyboard. It's compatible with three and five pin switches and the LEDs are south facing, so you don't have to worry about any interference with the keycaps. I mean, these keycaps are a little bit higher than Cherry Profile. These are a custom profile that is called MDR. I've never heard of it before but it's actually pretty nice. And if you might notice, they're actually a little bit more rounded around the tops than your typical Cherry or OEM profile keycaps. And I think it looks really nice. It goes really good with the kind of clean, cute, cozy vibe that this keyboard gives off. If you decide you want to change the keycaps, it should be fairly easy. Even though the layout is a little bit different here, the actual keycaps are all pretty standard with the one main exception being the right shift key. It's about a 1.75U. So if you can just find a set with that, everything else should be fairly simple. The bottom row is pretty straightforward. The battery is a 4000 milliamp hour battery. With that big of a battery, you're going to have a fairly decent amount of battery life, as long as you have the lighting off. Oh, and by the way, with Bluetooth, you can connect up to eight devices. 
which is insane. I don't think I've ever seen a keyboard that can connect to that many devices, maybe like six, or maybe I'm misremembering, but eight seems like a lot. I mean, I have a Logitech productivity keyboard that can only connect up to three devices. I mean, it doesn't seem very productive next to eight, does it? There are some lighting effects that are fairly simple and straightforward. If you've had RGB on a keyboard before, you've seen the RGB here. It does look pretty nice and bright and shines through the gaps in between the keycaps pretty nicely. Melgeek does have a software called Melgeek Hive because of the B, the B logo, it's kind of, it's kind of cute. You can use that to customize some of your keys, set up macros, and change the RGB effects on the keyboard if you'd like to, but you can also do some of that, at least the RGB lighting, on the keyboard itself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Modern 97 from Melgeek. It's a pretty dang good keyboard for the price at $139, especially with everything you're getting. You're getting a good looking keyboard that sounds nice, has a more compact layout, and it's just, it's under $150. I mean, what can I say? Not much, other than I am done with this video. And I would like it if you were to like this video, if you liked it, you could feel free to dislike it if you didn't. Tell me why you did or didn't like it in the comments. Do you plan to pick this keyboard up? Let me know. Maybe you have another similar keyboard that you'd like to recommend for other viewers or for myself to check out in the future. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends about this video, tell them about the channel. I got more stuff going on. If you're not new here, you might notice some changes in the background as I, I've, if you don't know, I've moved recently. And so things are changing with the setup and I'm planning to do a setup video very soon, possibly next week if all goes well. So stay tuned for that. Again, make sure you're subscribed and watch another video right here. That's all I'm gonna do today. I'm not even gonna edit this thing cause I am a tired boy and it is after work for me. What are you still doing here?